and this thing's not even breaking a sweat. Well, it shouldn't. It's only 666 watts out of a total of 1600 that it should be able to do. Today I'm going to show you how to make this 2000 watt power supply for $50. If you're into batteries like me and are currently building some kind of battery pack or DIY power wall, you know that, well, you have to test batteries and discharge them or charge them. And sometimes it takes a long time with small chargers. So you want to get yourself one of these bigger ones. This ones are around 1300 watts. This one right here, it's a 2000, it's a dual charger, dual channel, 2000 watt. But in order to operate it, well, you need something bigger than this. This is just a typical power supply, but it's only about 230 watts. And so, and so when I'm testing something like this big five kilowatt Tesla Powerwall, well, it just takes days. It takes so long that it might be there for days, right? So you need something bigger. So big power supplies, cost a lot of money unless you know how to do a little bit of hacking a little bit of soldering and that's what we're gonna do here what you have to do is find one of these server power supplies server power supplies are very robust high quality pieces of electronic these guys are what power the internet right and so they do that at 24 7 they have to be really reliable and so therefore they are mass produced and you can find them cheaply uh, all over the place. This one right here, I found it for $25 on eBay. And as you saw on an earlier video, soldering a couple of jumpers on it and putting a XT90 connector or any other type of connector, then you can make it a standalone power, 12 volt power supply that can give you up to 80 amps if you feed it 220 volts. At 120 volts, it'll give you somewhere around 60 amps. It's a ton of power. And most of these chargers, even these big ones, will not be able to handle that. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I just burst up. So what you have to do is buy a second one and then what you have to do is take it apart and then isolate it by making sure that the metal case is not touching the ground pads on the circuit board. And then adding the jumpers and uh, installing the XT90 connector in the back. Now I'd like to be extra careful and even though I isolated the casing of one of these power supplies from the ground, I'm also gonna add this sticky uh, cardboard that is usually used for uh, building batteries. That way there's a double layer of insulation in there. It's just a less chance of a short. All right, after that, I'll just use Captain Tape to tape both of these. Captain Tape is a high temperature uh, tape that is usually used for batteries or for isolating circuits that can potentially run hot. And so I'm gonna use it here to isolate the terminals. I'm also going to use this same type of tape to, to tape both units together before we wrap them on this blue shrink tube that is also commonly used to wrap batteries. After all of that, all you need to do is now make a Y connection. Using XC90 connectors, you have to bridge the, the positive terminal of one power supply to the negative terminal of the other and then the leftover terminals are your positive and your negative terminating on an XT90 connector. Now the last step is to combine both of the input power cords so that you so you don't have to use two separate AC outlets and as long as you don't run above 1500 watts you won't trip the breakers. All right let's test this new this should be 1600 watts let's see if we can dump we load it up and dump a bunch of that power in here into this single battery here. Yeah, 4.1, right? Let's do, let's do 15 amps. See how that handles. There we go. So the, so the thing, the battery says it's supposed to be at 51%. There's a pack voltage gonna start charging at full power supposedly 
The only thing that I'm kind of worried about is these cables. They're not super thick. What are they? 12 gauge. These are 12 gauge, 200C. And then they step up to like some beefy 8 gauge, which is the same thing that we have over here, 8 gauge. I'm waiting for, uh, this is the only EC5 connector that I had, so it also has thin cables. I'm going to change that to thicker 8 gauge uh, thing because I don't, I didn't want to cut this. I mean, maybe eventually I'll cut it and just do an XT90. All right. There we go, 15 amps. Let's see the supply is doing. Ah, the supply is only seeing like two amps, 2.3 amps, okay. 30 amps, can this handle 30 amps? Yeah, it's 20 cells, that's yeah, a good. Okay, so there's 30 amps. The supply is only seen 4 and 4.6 amps. Wait, so this is still only 100 watts? According to this, is only 100 watts. Well, 30 times 3 volts, yeah, I guess. 3 times 3 is 9. Yeah, so that's only 100 watts. So I think this charger is a lot smarter than the old one. I think this one will throttle things back. It, this one will not destroy itself like the last one. Yeah, this is nothing. I mean, this is 2,000 watts. Well, 1,000 watts per, per channel, I think, right? So, so we're doing 128 watts. Yeah, we need a bigger battery. This one... This one definitely, it's loading up on the, uh, all of the, all of the amperage here, but it's not really loading up the, our power supply here. Six amps on the power supply. Yeah, let's load up this guy with a bigger battery so that we can uh, do higher voltage and that 30 amp will be a lot more here. Yeah, let's load it up. Let's change this battery. All right, this is now a bigger battery. This is a 5.5 kilowatt battery, the Model S module, 6S. Uh, balancing leads here. Uh, now I took these out. I think these are a little bit better than these ones. These ones heat up. They can, these ones can't handle 40 amps. I think these ones can handle 40 amps. For, not for long. They start heating up too, so. Here we go. 6S, fast charge. Uh, yeah, 14, okay, let's go. All right, let's go higher. Let's go about 30 amps. Everything's kind of cold because everything's at 20 amps. Even these guys, oh, these are kind of feel a little warm. So it's ramping up 22, 23. Ooh, 30 amps on the uh, power supply already there we go 30 amps 26 on the uh, battery what's the voltage of the battery uh, 23.97 so 24 volt at the battery these cables are rated at 40 amps and they're fused actually at 40 amps. As you can see, I had to cut here and see if uh, they were blown because I was having problems once. Man, this thing's not even breaking a sweat. Well, it shouldn't. It's only 666 watts. 
out of a total of 1600 that it should be able to do. Should we go higher? There we go, 37 amps. So for some reason it's not going above 30 amps here. So input current limit. See, this one's smarter than the other one. This one will not blow itself up. Input current limit. For some reason is limiting the input current. Um, I think what that means is that it needs it will do more than 660 watts, this charger, but in order to achieve that, you might have to go higher on the input voltage, right? So at 30 amps, at 30 volts, for example, then you'll see closer to the 1,000 watts that each one of these will see. At 24 volts, or 25.25 volts right now, it only likes 30 amps. Uh, and that might be due to the uh, temperature on the MOSFETs, right, or the internals, uh, or it's just, I don't know, that maybe it's just programming like that, but look, you can go higher, I can do, it'll, oh, safety code, there we go, lost data link, I guess maybe that's what it tells you once you start pushing it harder it won't actually do it but then it'll give you this code so this is a much smarter uh, charger here so this this guy the fans were turning on now they're they're ramping down yeah this thing is these things are like tough they're like tanks totally can get like probably like 50 amps out of it uh, continues, no problem, right? I mean, it, on 220, it'll do 80 amps maximum, right? That's peak. So there you go. That's how you build a cheap $50, 1,600-watt uh, or 2,000-watt if you, if you want to give it 220 volts uh, power supply, right? And this is how you isolate them and then, uh, yeah connect them like that all right i want to thank you for watching this video and if you want to know more about my projects like this open source diy power wall system that i'm working on or a review of this battery go device make sure you subscribe to this channel and if you're on facebook also join our facebook group jehu's diy power walls till next video and with that i say goodbye